Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about the TCA 9548A I squared C multiplexer. This will be this device here. So this is an I squared C multiplexer. So what it does, it allows you to use uh, several I squared C devices with the same address uh, on, on your microcontroller. Now in this example, I'm using an Arduino Uno, but uh, you can use any kind of I squared C compatible uh, microcontroller as long as you know how to program it. But in this example, we are using this uh, Arduino based uh, microcontroller. So this thing works uh, in a very, very simple principle. So first of all, this has a certain I squared C address, which can be changed between 0x70 to 0x77. Uh, and how you change it is that you pull the A0, A1, A2 pins to different levels. So yeah, they can be in between low and high. So how you combine these low and high levels between these three pins, uh, you can change the address of this device. And why is this important? Because sometimes the device that you want to use uh, would have the same address as this uh, I squared C uh, multiplexer. So first you have to decide what is the address of this. And then you can pick any kind of uh, instrument. And this example, I'm using two uh, OLED displays with the same address, but uh, now I'm using the multiplexer to be able to access them and uh, use them. And what I do here is a very, very simple example. I just run uh, some simple uh, counter, and then when the counter's value is increased, then I print the increased value on the display, and then that's all. And again, upon every uh, counter increase, the new value is displayed here. And uh, since they have the same address, you would not be able to uh, use them directly by just directly wiring them uh, to your Arduino because there would be a conflict on the I squared C bus. So instead of that, we use this. And how this works is that basically you use the SDA SCL pins to connect this thing to your Arduino. And then, uh, based on a command that you send from the Arduino to this uh, board, uh, you select one of the uh, connections on the board. You have eight connections, so eight pairs of SDA and SCL uh, pins on the, let's say, other side of the chip. And uh, then, uh, with this command, you selected one of the outputs, and then you access the address of this device. So, first of all, uh, you select uh, the, the address by sending a, a command to this multiplexer, and then you directly uh, like address this thing. And uh, that, that is like very simple. I will show you the code, of course, and uh, you will understand it better. But this is a very, very simple example. And uh, it's, it's nothing really uh, extraordinary. But uh, why I want to show this is because this is a very useful uh, thing if you want to work with uh, I squared C devices with the same address. And actually I encountered a similar issue with uh, this device. So if you are watching my uh, videos regularly, uh, you know that I've been working with this AS5600 magnetic encoder. And unfortunately this specific device has a fixed address. Therefore, uh, you can use only one device on one bus. And uh, obviously, if you are working with multiple stepper motors, for example, you have an X, Y axis, uh, you cannot use it easily with uh, a single um, microcontroller because uh, they would be in conflict with each other. So what you can do uh, to resolve this conflict is you do the same as we did here. Uh, you use a multiplexer and then you switch between uh, the multiple uh, encoders. And uh, actually I will make a video about this topic, but first I just uh, want to introduce you the very general idea of uh, multiplexing the I squared C uh, signals. So this is nothing extraordinary and nothing uh, difficult. So this will be really just a dumped down example just to show you how to do it quickly and then you can of course adjust the code and adjust uh, the connections and everything uh, based on your requests. So enough talking about this uh, demonstration you can see that it works and uh, it works uh, properly. So let's jump uh, to the uh, source code of this 
and then I show you how it works uh, in the Arduino code. So this is the Arduino code and this is a very simple code and uh, quite short but uh, it can serve as a skeleton for more complicated uh, codes and at least you can see the uh, code working and you can see this as an example. So since I was using an Arduino in the demonstration, uh, I was using the regular A4 for SDA and A5 for SCL uh, pins. And since this is an I2C uh, device, then we have to include the wire uh, library, which takes care of this uh, communication. And then I have uh, two counters, which are the counters for the display. Uh, those are the counters which are increased with each iteration of the main loop and that is the number which is actually printed on the OLED displays so you could see them increasing while I was talking about the components uh, shown in the video. So then uh, there is a third variable which is called display counter and either this is 0 or 1 so we switch between the two uh, displays with uh, this number and I will show you how it's done. Uh, regarding the display libraries, I'm using the Adafruit libraries, so the highlighted five lines are just the standard uh, examples uh, which are uh, provided by the Adafruit, so this is just some copy-paste and uh, nothing else. And then uh, I have these two objects, display1, display2, so those are the uh, displays that we are using for printing any kind of information. And then uh, we reached uh, the setup. So what we do here is that we switch to the first uh, display, that was the left hand side uh, display, and then we uh, start uh, using it and this will be the address that we will uh, reach in fact. And then uh, I just uh, defined some uh, text size and color and then I just waited a little bit and then I switched to the display number two, that was the right hand sided display and I just did the same uh, exercise here. So the, this is very simple. And then in the loop, uh, basically this is uh, the same. So we are just switching between displays and we just update the contents of this. So how does this work? Uh, well, first we select the display and then we print something on it. Then I wait and then uh, I switch to the other display, print something on it and then I wait. And then this starts over and over. And uh, now I used some delays but it's better to use some timers because then you don't block your code but this is just a demonstration so it's much much more easier to use this uh, kind of delays. So then let's see what these uh, functions contain. So the print display one is technically it's a very simple uh, function so we clear the content of the display and then we put the cursor on the top uh, left corner so that's the very uh, beginning of the screen and then we print the value uh, of the counter 1 on the display so then it's uh, displayed and then we increase the value of the counter 1 so when the code enters this the next time then let's say instead of 0 this will be 1 and then if it enters again instead of 1 it will be 2 and so on and so on and I'm not explaining this, but this is just the same, but uh, the counter is now the counter too, because this function takes care of the second screen. And then uh, the most important thing basically is how we switch between the two displays. So as I said, we have to take care of two addresses. One address is the i squared c multiplexers address, and this address is only used to reach uh, the multiplexer and switch between the outputs of the multiplexer. So we switch between channel 0 and channel 7 and uh, then the multiplexer will know that it should uh, forward the signal between the Arduino and the OLED through a certain address. And by address now I just mean the address of the pins, so SD0, SD1 and so on and so on up until SD7. So what happens here is that uh, we check the display counter's value and if it's 0 and it is 0 in the beginning then we enter this part of the code and what happens is that we connect to the multiplexer and then we tell the multiplexer that we want to use the SD0, SC0 pins and then we finish the transaction and then we change this value to 1. So when in the next iteration 
the switch display function is called, this will be skipped since uh, the value here is now not zero and uh, the else branch uh, will be used. And what happens in the else branch is that we reach the multiplexer again, but now we write the number one, so basically this number what matters, uh, on the multiplexer. And this means that we want to reach the SD1, SC1 uh, connections. And that is done. So now uh, we finish the transaction and then we set this display counter value back to zero. So when there is another iteration, then the code will enter this part. So we will reach the first uh, part or the first uh, connections as the zero and SC1 again. So this goes over and over. So now you know how this loop works. So first we select the SD0, SC0 pins. We update uh, the information on the display, which is connected to these pins. Then we wait. Then we select the SD1, SC1 pins. Then we update the information on the display, which is connected to the SD1, SC1 pins. And then we wait. And then we switch back to the SD0, SC0. And then this goes over and over. And since we always increase the values of the counters, then uh, you will see larger and larger number on the display. So this is how it works. So this is a very simple uh, concept and uh, I think it's very easy to, to use this, but you can use this uh, for a very, very complex projects where you need to take care of, uh, for example, several sensor informations uh, with the same address. And in fact, I will address this address issue, pun intended, uh, in one of my upcoming videos where I will work with multiple stepper motors and I want to read uh, the position of the shaft of these stepper motors and these AS5600 uh, magnetic encoders. Unfortunately, they have a fixed address, you cannot change it. So you have to use this I2C uh, multiplexer. So that will be some of my upcoming video related to this topic where we have a bit more uh, complex uh, issue to solve and then uh, we will see if it works in in practice. So basically this was the entire video. This was a short video but I wanted to uh, work on this issue and explain it as well. So I also make sure that I understand and I can work with this. So I hope that this was uh, useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.